Hi, this is Rachel at the Crystal Tree, and today I'm going to be talking about two sculptures that I recently made out of paper clay. This is the second video. If you'd like to see the first video where these are not painted and, and um, they're still not fully formed, um, please check my YouTube page. The first one I'm going to talk about today is this first sculpture, which is a little gnome house or fairy house. It originally was a ceramic bottle that I went and covered with paper clay. And um, the clay that I used to make this, the house's uh, roof and um, almost the entire structure was made from a paper clay that I store bought. Um, you can get it at any Michael's or Joann's store. Um, it usually runs for about $11 to $10, depending on um, where you go. Uh, when I built this, uh, in my first video, I talked about the fact that I was worried that the legs on the bottom of the tree were going to snap off. So I went ahead and I made homemade paper clay, and I um, attached it to the um, side of the house here. And I also made these rocks out of it, and I also went and finished the bottom so it didn't look like I was joining the clay. And it turned out quite nice. Um, I was actually surprised at the, the, the homemade paper clay and um, I thought it turned out neat. And um, another thing that I really liked is that um, I'm practicing with paint since uh, I haven't really had a lot of practice with it. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to give this house an old look and what I used is a, a dark brown with a little bit of water. And so what I first did is painted the entire um, object uh, with the colors that I wanted and to give it the aged look, I went ahead and took the dark uh, acrylic paint and got it just a little bit wet. And then I went ahead and um, kind of lightly brushed it on and um, would quickly wipe it off with the brush, not like with a towel, because I still wanted a lot of that detail to show up in the clay. And I felt it did a good job. The only thing I didn't really care for was that I do feel that the colors are a little on the dark side. And what to, to fix that is that I would probably would have, if I do this again, um, and I will, I plan to make more sculptures, is maybe use a lighter color um, when painting. So like this dark green, I would have used a lighter color of green because once you paint that brown on, it darkens it anyways. So you want to maybe use lighter colors first, let them dry, and then go over them with a um, darker paint, and that will give it that nice old aged look. And um, I do like how it turned out. And um, for my first attempt at making bushes and trees, they look like a bush, they look like a tree. Um, mushrooms, they, they look good. Um, the stairs, um, I feel need a little bit of work. But I really like, my favorite part on this is where the tree is attached to the, the building and there's a little bit of a walkway. And I do like my stones. I thought my rocks turned out looking beautifully. I mean, uh, you can't really see it in the camera but uh, they look like I went outside and picked up some rocks and stuck them on here. So I really enjoyed that. I thought that turned out really neat. And um, which is nice is that I also made it so that the roof will fit on there and still looks nice. So if someone purchases this, they can keep something like little, like their rings or earrings or something like that and um, just put it on top. Now, the only thing that is bad about working with paper clay is that this cannot go outside. This cannot be put near anything with moisture. It's more of a on-the-shelf um, for display purposes. Uh, you do not want to put your paper clay outside. You really can't treat it because of the materials that it's made out of. Um, if you want to do something outside, you're going to have to look at a different type of clay um, or not even clay, um, something that can be maybe, this is an air dry clay. So um, getting it wet um, over time would eventually make it fall apart. So that's the only bad part about it. But um, it paints up really nicely and I, I think the house turned out really neat. And so I'm going to talk about my second sculpture real quick. This is a little gargoyle monster and he's almost done. Uh, I think I want to add like a little um, clear marble that he's holding in his hand or something else um, I feel he, his hand should have something in it. Um, I showed him in the last video, and when they saw him, he didn't have his arms, he didn't have the feet, he didn't have the tail or the wings. He was mostly just a head, and he didn't even have um, his nose 
or his mouth, really. Um, I didn't know what I was... This was my first time working with the homemade clay, and this is what the homemade clay did. As you can see, it does give a lot of, like, if you want to give a lot of wrinkles or character, but, like, if you want to go ahead and get, like, really fine detail, like I did on the house, um, I'm finding that maybe the paper clay that you make at home might not work. I have to make a couple more things with it first because I'm experimenting, but um, I felt the homemade clay looked really neat because it gave me a lot of different wrinkles on his body. And I did the same kind of painting I did uh, on him that I did on this one, except that on him I went ahead and I did metallic bronze, and then I went ahead and used metallic colors on him like green and um, uh, light gold. And I went over him with the brown paint like I did on this one, but he wasn't dark enough. I felt he needed to be a little darker. So what I did is I went and added a little bit of black to my brown paint, and I was I watched it pretty closely because um, the darker you go, you could ruin your item and you'll have to repaint it. And you don't want to have too much paint on, on your items because eventually it cakes up. Uh, I also like how I did his nose. His nose, what he originally was, is this. This is what it started out as. And I took his nose and used it as part of this part, um, the little latch. So that's actually what his nose is on here, if I can get it in the screen. I don't want to drop this on the ground. But um, you can see his nose is right there. And then when you open him up, he's the inside of the treasure chest. And this was stuff I had left over. You can get these at Michael's um, craft store. Um, any wooden box or even paper box will work. You can even use tin foil. And um, to attach his arms, what I did is I used tin foil first to make his arms. And then I went ahead and covered it with the clay. And then I made his his hands and his, his fingers are made out of actual tin foil. His wings are actually, um, I went ahead and did uh, two pieces of, uh, I guess it's metal wire. And then I went and put tin foil around it. And then I went and uh, duct taped uh, it to the back of him. And his tail is actually all one piece of clay. I didn't use any tin foil or anything like that, which in the, might be a problem later on. If he hits just right, he'll break. But anyways, if you drop this guy on the floor, he's probably going to break either on his arm or his, or his wings. I'm still learning about armatures. I'm get, planning on getting a book um, in the next week or two that will show me how to make armatures properly. But um, I just wanted to experiment and um, I think he turned out really neat. I think uh, I, I wanted a bright color inside of him, so when you open him up, you can store stuff. In, and he stands um, quite nicely. Uh, I added the tail because when I didn't have the tail on there, he just fell over backwards. And um, I didn't like that. I didn't want that to happen. And he shuts really nicely. If you tip him upside down, he's not going to come out, or kind of kind of come open. And so I, I think he um, is really neat. For <laughs> I've never made a sculpture this big before. I'm used to working with polymer clay and not paper clay. So um, I think he turned out really neat. And um, But I wanted to show that stuff to you so you can see what you can do with paper clay. I want to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Uh, please like and subscribe.